Hey, what's up guys? So coming here this morning with another, um, well actually with the weekend recap, the from, what was it, um, all the way through September 6th, I think it was August uh, 31st through September 6th, looking at all the uh, fights that took place that week. Um, there was two cards to talk about. Um, the first one took place on Saturday night on ESPN+. Plus. Um, it was uh, the undercard to talk about first. We had um, undefeated heavyweight Jared Anderson, 5-0, and 5 knockouts, handled um, unknown Rodney uh, Hernandez from Modesto, California, and uh, dominated him. Uh, I think it was a fifth-round TKO victory. You know, uh, uh, Hernandez had a couple little moments, but Anderson pretty much handled it and boxed well and just uh, hurt him badly in the fifth and finished him. And, uh, you know, impressive impressive performance in a you know for him as he moves forward um what i do like about what's going on right now with um you know with every the positive to take from the coronavirus pandemic that's going on is you get more espn cards right now but you also get to see some of these um guys on the rise uh fighting in a more prominent role on the main card instead of uh fighting on the undercard of all because the ESPN and ESPN Plus cards, like last last year or earlier this year, for instance, they would be like 10, 12 fight, you know, cards. So you'd be getting a lot of these earlier on, and most people wouldn't tune in for those fights. So you wouldn't see these prospects on the rise very much unless they were a very hot prospect. Um, now you got to see two on the undercard, you know. Um, you got to see Anderson handle his opponent well and on his rise. He's now 6-0 and with six knockouts. And then you had Steven Nelson, super middleweight, undefeated. Um, I think he was 16 and 0 with 13 knockouts coming in. You got to see him come up and um, and beat uh, beat um, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, De I think DeAndre Ware, who also had a good story coming in. He's a firefighter and he actually saved somebody from a heart attack on uh, during the weigh-in on Friday. Um, but Nelson uh, picked him apart, stopped him impressively, remained undefeated. And now it's pushing forward, you know, towards other things. So that was nice to see two prospects on the rise, you know, to see their uh, career progress. Nelson said after he wants, uh, he thinks he's ready for a title eliminator. 168's a good division. So we'll see if he can get thrown into the mix there. Um, but the main event saw the reigning WBO Super Featherweight Champion at 130, Jamel Herring, um, taking on Jonathan Akendo, the veteran. Um, you know, ended up being uh, a little bit better of a fight than I than I was expecting. You know, um, Herring didn't look as dominant as I think he should have, but he also didn't fight in shit. Was it uh, ten months? It, it was between fights. Um, you know, he he hasn't fought since last November. Um, this was a prelude fight to the showdown with Carl Frampton. Um, what sucked is that fight. We really wanted to see it in November or December between him and Frampton, and. Um, he walked out with a, I think an eight, eighth round disqualification victory over, um, over a Kendo because a Kendo, um, did an intentional headbutt in the fifth round that caused a cut that led to Harry not be able, being able to see out of his eye. And, um, Harry said, I can't see. So they stopped the fight and it was ruled a disqualification victory because of an intentional foul that caused the cut. Now, if it would have went to the scorecards, Herring had no issue. He would have won that fight going away. So either way, he wins that fight. Um, you know, I'm not too disappointed by the performance because I felt he was winning convincingly, um, you know, and it was a tune-up out towards a bigger fight against Frampton. It really wasn't going to be a fight that showed us anything anyways. If the fight would have been close, if a Kendall would have upset him, then, hey, you can say maybe Herring's not as good as we thought. But the fact that he had a few moments where – a Kendall was competitive and in the fight doesn't tell me that you know it was um, the best Jamel Herring and that we should look down on the guy at not at all um, but because of that cut and I think he, he scratched his retina from what he said the fight might get pushed pushed back till January which the WBO came out and said that he must make his mandatory defense by January so there's a lot of things at place here a lot of moving pieces and you know, I'm hoping that the WBO allows him and whoever the number one contender is allows, which is Shakur Stevenson right now, I would hope the WBO would allow Herring and Frampton to go off 
with Shakur Stevenson to fight the winner, um, you know, uh, of that possibly towards the middle of next year. Um, but, you know, it's really up to the WBO. It's a, we got to see how long this injury is going to keep him out. But, um, you know, Herring got the win, and he's going to push forward towards something bigger in his next fight for sure, whether it be, you know, but we'll see who that is. So, um, and we'll talk about that on the what's next for Herring when we, uh, next week. Um, the other card that took place was on Sunday on uh, PBC, and that's all. Uh, basically, the main event's the only one I'm going to talk about, but undefeated Omar Juarez on the rise. Got another knockout win in the second round. Impressive. Um, you know, our, our sometime during that fight. I can't remember which round it was. We got another win. Stayed undefeated. Congrats to him. But the main event, you saw your Dennis Ugas challenging for the vacant WBA regular title. Um, at welterweight 147 against Abel Ramos was trying to pull off another upset push forward um, Ugas pretty much outboxed and outclassed Ramos the whole fight, but he also stayed in front of Ram Ramos a little too much got stunned a couple times Got stunned at the end of the 12th round um, but uh, They a couple of the judges had it 115 113 the fight was not that close I think Ugas won at least nine rounds clear winner unanimous decision they at least they got the winner right and he is now the wba regular world champion so congratulations to him i don't think anybody's really surprised that he won this fight um i'm surprised that he allowed ramos he stood in front front of ramos but i respect that too he's trying to get that guy out of there but when it comes to you, you take risk earlier in the fight to see what the guy's capable of when you're that far ahead you don't take risk anymore in that 12th round you know i think that was a mistake it could cost him against a better fighter, you know, but um, other than that, nice performance. And, um, you know, he remains, uh, you know, a solid ass fighter in the best division in boxing at 147. So, uh, you know, we'll talk, we'll discuss his what's next, next, uh, next week when, when we uh, go into all that. But that's it. That's the boxing recap from uh, August 31st through September 6th. I hope you enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.